Ahoy hoy! Hibby here at 55 feet at the office and today I got a video for you guys who are just now starting out with getting into wild crafting edibles and I wanted to make sure that you guys had the proper knowledge that you need to properly identify these at wild edibles before you start eating them and to kind of dispel some of the old misconceptions of the day. So come on down and we'll uh, take a look. Okay, so as kids, we're always told, you know, get that out of your mouth. Stop that, get that out of your mouth. And so we got kind of like this fear of just putting anything in our mouths and eating stuff, which is kind of founded and a probably a good idea because, you know, I catch my daughter all the time putting things in her mouth she should not be eating. So, so human beings, we're omnivores. So we can eat just about anything. Uh, we're not like a cow, we don't have three stomachs. So when we eat a vegetable, we're not going to break that down three times and gleam every little mineral and vitamin and uh, protein and acid and all the other chemicals that are along with it. So one thing might be poisonous to cattle is not poisonous and actually might be really beneficial to human beings. Okay, so let's take a walk outside and we'll take a look at some examples of the ways that plants grow so that we can learn to identify them so that you're 100% positive what you're putting in your mouth is edible. Okay, so now we're going to get on to some of the biology stuff, so it's going to get kind of uh, intense. So if uh, you start to glaze over and you get a little like tuning out and stuff, I'm going to put down below in the comments uh, at what intervals of the video you can skip ahead to so you're not incredibly bored. We're here on our local trail and I wanted to show you guys an example of uh, where not to pick your wild edibles from because on a trail like this chances are that a lot of people have used herbicides to knock back some of the unwanted vegetation and that can make you real sick. When you're trying new edibles for the first time you might be allergic to something so you never just want to take anything and just eat it. You always want to try a little bit of it, masticate it and then spit it out and, and then wait a half hour and uh, Try to notice any effects that you're feeling on your tongue. If you feel any kind of like burning sensation or tingling, or if it's like a really bitter or really astringent, then just spit it out and then uh, wait a half hour, see how you feel. Um, if you have no ill effects, then you know that that's uh, edible and you can go ahead and, with the next time around, you will go ahead to chew it. You can go ahead and swallow it next time. Just a little bit. And then when you swallow that piece, just wait another half hour. And uh, same thing, you know, wait a little bit and see how you feel. If there's no ill effects, then you can figure out that you're probably not allergic to that plant and you can go ahead and eat it. So, this is bed straw. It's got a lot of vitamins and minerals in it, so it's really good for people who are, are sick or need to detox. If they've detoxed and need to get uh, more minerals in their system, this is really good for you. Not a choice edible. Kind of tastes like uh, alfalfa, but um, when you're in a pinch, it works. And... Um, uh, you want to get the young stuff. If you get the older stuff, one of the surefire ways of telling that this is bed straw is on the bottom of the leaves here, there's little hairs and it's real grippy. So when you when you pull on it, it wants to Velcro to your hand. And that's a dead giveaway. Plus it's got the six, six leaves that are whirled. And um, if you get the older stuff, those little hairs on the underside are kind of overpowering and they'll it's really hard in your mouth. So you, if you just steam it for about three three minutes you're good to go so the first year is a seedling and it puts out these two petals so it's bipedal and then once it grows a little older out of the terminal bud it puts out six more petals in a whorl shape so that's the growth characteristic of this plant and it's an annual so that means it lives for one year puts out seeds and then it dies and you can see the two it's um Right there's a terminal bud, and that's where the seedling opens up its two leaves, and then after it grows and matures, it puts out the world six leaves, and then during uh, the spring, it'll put out some white flowers on either sides of these leaves here, and these leaf this leaf shape is called opposite. Okay, so dang, that is a sweet rosette. Wow, this is a rosette, and this is a biannual plant meaning that the life cycle is two years. So this is the first year, this is when it's a little baby, baby plant. 
and uh, this is the first year of the life cycle. This is teasel. This is a biennial. It has a two year life cycle. So biannual means that it's two years. And this is the first year of growth. It puts out this rosette and then it fills the roots with minerals and vitamins in preparation for the second year. Then the second year it's going to grow up and turn into a great big plant like this here where it goes to seed. This is actually a skeleton of the last year's seed. As you can see it gets it gets pretty big teasel and uh, it, then it goes to seed and then it dies and this is the skeleton of the second year of, it, of the annual plant. Okay here we have a fig tree and this is a perennial and perennial just means that it lives for three or more years. Okay so here I have a chittum stem and I wanted to show you that this is an alternate growth pattern for the buds. You can see it's one here and then it jumps up and alternates to the other side of the stem where the next bud is and then you've got your terminal bud at the tip. So this is an alternate bud configuration and that's coming off the meristem which grows up and then another stem alternates off of that. So all the growth pattern on this tree is alternate. And over here we have a vine maple and this is opposite. So if you're looking at the meristem the bud splits on e either side and it's opposite. So now it continues on throughout the plant. You see two small buds here that are opposite, opposite, and then the terminal bud there. So we're here next to a roadway and I wanted to show you some more stuff of reasons why you shouldn't wildcraft but within 150 feet of roadways or pathways or wherever people are going to be at. As you can see here, this, this stuff is burnt back pretty good by a, a cell disruptor herbicide. So. You can see it's it's uh, the leaves are um, got weird cupped shapes to them. It's got epinasty. That's the technical term for it. But uh, this is a good indication that someone's been treating this with herbicide, and you don't want to put that in your mouth. So once again, thanks for uh, tuning in. And if you have any questions or concerns or comments, go ahead and leave them below. Never scared, always prepared, and God bless. Nuts. Nuts. <laughs>